Our world has been in isolation. Many have been in quarantine, and, and a lot of us, I think, would feel like we've been in, in quarantine for quite a time now, isolating. And we're just starting now to emerge with life after isolation. The word quarantine actually comes from the Latin word for 40. In Latin, the name for Lent is quadragesima, which is very similar to quarantine. 40 days is what we experience when we go into to Lent. It was about the midpoint of Lent that we had our last Mass here in Australia. It was on the Pink Sunday, I think, was our last Mass that we had here. 40 days is an important day, important time for, for Lent in preparing for Easter. But then we have 40 days in Easter, and on the 40th day of Easter, we celebrate the Ascension, Jesus ascending into heaven, bodily and soul. That'll be what we celebrate next week. Our readings today take a shift, and it starts to get us prepared for what life is like after quarantine, after Jesus ascends. And the readings today are starting to, to give us an indication, I think, not just about what life is like after the ascension, but I think it's giving an indication for what it can be like for us, for those who are at home, but even for those here within our church today, what life can be like after isolation stops, after we start to take a few steps after this quarantine period. So what do we hear? First reading, we have Acts of the Apostles. Philip has gone to a town, a Samaritan town, and he's started to bring those people to Christ. But they were in isolation from the rest of the community. A little bit like perhaps some of us have been over the last six weeks ago, or seven weeks or so. We've been in isolation. We've been connected in some ways, but they were in isolation in this community. And Philip goes up to Jerusalem, he talks with the community there, and he says, we have this whole town of people who've come to Jesus Christ. And what they did was quite interesting. They didn't just say, oh, well done, Philip. But what they did was that Peter and John went to visit them. And they then became connected. This Samaritan town became connected with the broader church, that they weren't just in isolation, but they were actually a connected community. And so Peter and John come and they call down the Holy Spirit. They extend hands, they lay hands. And this community, this Samaritan community, no longer were isolated in their faith, but they were connected in their faith. And to a certain extent, some of us at home, we've been starting perhaps our own domestic churches and hopefully you've been participating and encouraging others to participate and connect during this time. But as we start to emerge slowly out of quarantine, out of the 40-day period that we've been preparing for the ascension, we need to take a step out. And it's, it's a hard thing to do. We need to be courageous in doing that. And it's thank you to those who've come this evening. You've been courageous. Taking a, just that little step. I've talked to some people and I think, oh, I'm, I'm not ready yet. As Christians, we need to take that step and we need to be connected with others. So for those at home, start to connect with others in all sorts of different ways. Social media is a great way to start. If you have to go to the shops, look at those around you. Make eye contact. I remember talking about this six or seven weeks ago before we shut down, preparing our people, saying... When you see people, don't ignore them. Know that we're all part, we're doing this together. We're connected. So Peter and John go to this community, this Samaritan community, and they make them connected with the bigger church. And that's what we're called to do in little baby steps over the next few, few weeks or the next few months. In the gospel, Jesus says that he will send an advocate. He will send the Holy Spirit. An advocate is someone who is a bit like a lawyer who wants to fight on behalf of others. 
And we should be doing what we can to not just think of ourselves at this time, but doing what we can to help others, to fight for the rights of others, to do what we can to assist others. That's part of being the community after the ascension. In those days after ascension, just before Pentecost, the community came together in prayer, preparing themselves for the coming of the Holy Spirit. And then what happens? Straight after the coming of the Holy Spirit at Pentecost, they go. In some sense, you could say they were isolated, but they weren't. They were connected, even though they were going in all sorts of different places. And they were doing that to spread the good news, to spread the Holy Spirit. So I encourage you all, be connected still. Take those baby steps that we need to. Continue to wash our hands. Continue to maintain the hygiene that we're meant to. Let's not get slack. In some parts of the world, it's springtime. The weather is starting to become beautiful. Here, it was a beautiful day today, but we have the, we have the potential in the next few weeks for it to get quite cold. I'm sure you're experiencing it at home already. Let's not be slack in our, our observance at this time, but let's be connected and let's look to others so that we are a community that's thriving with the Holy Spirit. Quarantine is only meant to be for a certain period of time. Lent comes to an end and we get Easter. And eventually Easter comes to an end and we get the ascension and then we get Pentecost. And then there is life after that. How are we going to live after quarantine, after isolation? That's maybe a thought in our prayer for us this evening. We've got an insight to what happened in Samaria with Philip and then with Peter and John coming to connect them. How are we going to live that out in the coming days?